each night Through darkness and through light Cry it out to the world Spread the word Spread the word of his love Every difficulty faced in our life بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ثم ما بعد Welcome to our main theme Islam and Politics and this is our fifth and last episode and it is about the religion of human nature Islam is the religion of human nature but let us first ask the question what do we mean by human nature? There is a word in uh, Arabic and used in the Quran which is called fitra. And it is sometimes only translated to mean human nature. Human nature uh, can mean something good or something bad. Uh, for example, if someone says something, does or something bad, people would say, well, this is human nature. But uh, the word fitra does not refer to this kind of nature. It refers to the good qualities with which Allah endowed human beings. This is the basic human nature. The other bad things are deviations from this nature. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the human being in the best of uh, nature. But he gave him or her the ability to uh, not to listen to uh, this nature, but to act uh, against it. So what we mean by saying that the religion of human nature is that it is the religion which is suitable to this good nature with which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala endowed uh, human beings. This is mentioned in the verse uh, which reads فَأَقِمْ وَجْهَكَ لِلدِّينِ حَنِيفَةً فِطْرَةَ اللَّهِ الَّتِي فَطَرَ النَّاسَ عَلَيْهَا لَا تَبْدِيلَ لِخَلْقِ اللَّهِ ذَلِكَ الدِّينُ الْقَيِّمُ And set your face straight to the religion that is the fitra of Allah with which he uh, with uh, in doubt uh, human beings there is no changing the uh, creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this of the creation of Allah this is the verse this means that that good uh, nature does not change that does. but does that mean that every human being is good or that he uh, or uh, she behaves according to that uh, Nature? No, it doesn't mean so. It only means that nature is there. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the human beings the will. He gave them freedom of the will. Whether to go in accordance with that um, good nature or not. Or to listen to him or not to listen to him. Uh, so the nature doesn't change. Now what is the proof? that um, uh, Islam is compatible or is in consonance with this uh, good uh, human nature. Now, among the qualities that constitute uh, human nature, our first reason is a good quality. And uh, these good qualities, reason like reason, moral values like uh, inclination to tell the truth or that saying that telling the truth is a good thing or belief in God's existence or worshipping none but God and now these good uh, qualities are human qualities they are not confined to a country or a place or time, they are human. And uh, prophets come to the basic address of the prophets is based on 
these common qualities of human beings. And this applies especially to the uh, religion of Islam with which uh, Prophet Muhammad came. I say with which Prophet Muhammad came because in fact every Prophet came with Islam. Every Prophet came with Islam. But Prophet Sallallahu came with the complete and most comprehensive uh, form of this uh, religion. Now, in this religion, there is a good place for reason. First, uh, there is no contradiction in the religion. This is mentioned in the Quran. And there, I know of no religion which says uh, to the people, test me. If you see any contradictions in my book, then this book is not from Allah. But this is what we find in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِي غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا Had this meaning, referring to the Quran, had it been from other than Allah, they would have found therein many uh, contradictions. So Allah is giving us a test to see whether uh, a book is a book from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or it is not. So this is a big place uh, for reason. Secondly, because the religion, there is no contradiction in the religion, rational deduction is accepted in the religion. You add this verse to that verse and you deduce from them something. You add this verse to that hadith of the Prophet and you deduce something. This is what our great scholars, the Fuqaha, since the time of the Prophet ﷺ, have been doing. So again, this is a great place for religion. We are also told to argue with people, to argue, and you cannot argue with uh, other people except on rational grounds. I was once asked to talk about building bridges uh, between Islam and other religions. And I said, the bridges are already there. We don't have to build them. The bridges are already there. What did I mean by this? I meant that Islam addresses people as rational people. And if the people with whom we want to build bridges are rational people, irrespective of the religion uh, to which they belong, if they are rational people, then there is a bridge between us and them. And so we don't have to build any uh, bridges. Then moral values. There is a great place for moral values in the religion of Islam. So much so that the Prophet ﷺ was asked whether a Muslim and it can be a Muslim and yet steal or drink or so on. He said yes. And when he was asked whether he can be a Muslim and a liar, he said no. Because telling the truth is the most important moral value. If a person is a liar, then there is a contradiction between his behavior and what he claims to be his belief. Then. There is much in the Quran, in the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, much talk against arrogance. And it is equated with the kufr. Because and the Prophet ﷺ said, and he described as an arrogant person, as a person who does not accept the truth and who contempts other people. The Quran describes people who reject uh, the message of Prophet as people who are arrogant. So, uh, and so on, there is a call for justice. For example, when the Prophet ﷺ told the Muslims, companions, his companions, he said, come to the help of your brother, whether he is aggressor or the victim of aggression. And they asked him, we know how to help him if he is the victim of aggression but how can we help him when he is the aggressor he said you prevent him from uh, aggression and in that way you will be helping him 
أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ثم أما بعد The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said يعني described as an arrogant person as a person who does not accept the truth and who contempts other people. The Quran describes people who reject uh, the message of Prophet as people who are arrogant. So, uh, and so on, there is a call for justice. For example, when the Prophet وسلم, told the Muslims, companions, his companions, he said, come to the help of your brother, whether he is aggressor or the victim of aggression. And they asked him, we know how to help him if he is the victim of aggression, but how can we help him when he is the aggressor? He said, you prevent him from uh, aggression, and in that way you will be helping him. We talked about reason, because this is one of the qualities of, this is part of human nature, the good human nature. And uh, we talked about uh, moral values, uh, which are uh, common to all uh, human beings. Now, the third uh, thing which proves that Islam is uh, a religion of human nature is that uh, it calls for belief in the existence of the Creator. And again, this is taken by, as something to be obvious by the overwhelming majority of human beings. The overwhelming majority of human beings believe in the existence of the Creator, just the existence of the Creator. But Islam calls for something else in which not the overwhelming majority of the people believe, but uh, which they know and uh, which many of them believe in. And that is to worship nothing, no one but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Worship none but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There was something strange about the Arabs to whom the Prophet is there. They used to worship their idols. But if they go to the sea, take a boat in the sea, and something happens to the boat, and they think they are about to die or so, they make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. They forget about their idols. And there is a, an interesting story about someone. He didn't like uh, the Prophet's uh, message and wanted to leave to another country. And he went and um, took a boat, with some, a ship with some other people. Now, before the ship started to move, uh, the sailor told them, told them, he advised them, if something happens to the ship, then only the God above can save you. Don't call your idols or so. He said, uh, I said to myself, if only the God above can help us in the sea, he must be the only God that can help us on land. So, and this is what Prophet Muhammad is saying. So he left, uh, he changed his mind and came back and became uh, a Muslim. So I know from the experience of the Arabs, I don't know much about other cultures to quote this, but from the experience of the Arabs, I know that many of them knew that it is good to worship only one God, when, especially when you are in a difficulty. Um, the third uh, point is that uh, Islam addresses all people. In Islam, it addresses all people. It does not address Arabs or uh, Indians or uh, Europeans or, or so and so on. It addresses all people because it is 
addressed to all people as uh, human beings. And because it addresses them as human beings, it does not make anything that is purely cultural part of the religion. For example, uh, the religion was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu who was an Arab, and his companions were Arabs. But Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala did not say in the Quran that you cannot speak any language except Arabic. He did not say you cannot dress in any way except the way the Arabs uh, dressed, or you cannot eat or cook in any way that uh, the Arabs do. Uh, he praised only those, uh, those cultural past of the Arabs that were purely human, but not the ones that were, were purely uh, cultural and changing and, and so on. So Islam did not confine itself to uh, any particular uh, culture. And that is why people of different times and different cultures and so on accepted it. All uh, times and places, uh, you find uh, Muslims who dress this way, other Muslims who dress another way, uh, Muslims who cook this way, the others who cook another way, and languages, uh, they speak different uh, languages, but they all of them uh, make shahada. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. They all of them believe in the pillars of Islam. Almost all of them. Uh, of course, there are some people who say uh, they are Muslims or how, who are counted as Muslims, but, but who are in fact not Muslims. I am talking here about people who genuinely call themselves uh, Muslims. Now, these people believe in, in prayer, in fasting, in zakah, in hajj. So this is something common. They also believe in the six pillars of faith. They believe in Allah and his angels, his books, and his messengers. And they believe in the hereafter, and they believe in Qadr, and so on. So. Of course, there are differences among Muslims, and there are uh, deviations. Many of them deviated from the true religion. But if you compare Muslims with people who belong to other religions, then you will find that the percentage of Muslims who adhere to their true religion is much greater than uh, the percentage of people who claim to adhere to uh, other religions. In fact, uh, some people who belong to other religions do not perhaps have any knowledge uh, of the book that they call sacred book. They are not sure about uh, the historical authenticity of the book. They say uh, that the book contains uh, some contradictions uh, and so on. So if you compare Muslims with people of other religions, you will still find the percentage among them who adhere to the true religion is much greater than. That doesn't mean that the percentage is high. That doesn't mean that there are no deviations among Muslims. Of course, there are uh, deviations, and not even the majority are adhering to the true religion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised, this is one of the reasons that can be mentioned for claiming that the Qur'an is the religion of human nature. Uh, just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last of the prophets, he also said that he will preserve this message. And uh, history has proved these most important claims. No one came after Muhammad who claimed to be a prophet like Jesus or Moses. So Muhammad is, has proven to be 
the last of the prophet and this means that he is the prophet that humanity needs uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised to preserve the message with which uh, he sent prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we have sent down the reminder meaning the Quran and the Sunnah and we will preserve it why preserve it because Muhammad is the last of the prophet and his message must be preserved for people to know it and to follow it someone wrote a book about another religion and uh, he criticized the sacred the so-called sacred book in which that religion uh, believes and he said that uh, there are many uh, contradictions in it and that uh, it is not uh, uh, historically uh, authentic uh, and so on then he asked himself the important question he said if uh, god was kind enough to send us this message 